Hi everyone. I get this question a lot. How do you paint wrinkles and folds in fabric? The art term for this is drapery and that can include clothing, rugs, curtains, basically any kind of fabric you see in drawings and paintings. My drapery today is difficult. It's the American flag. As you can see, I've already drawn light pencil outlines and have wet down the entire picture with a big brush and now I'm dropping in some red, yellow, and blue. This flag was lit by soft, sort of golden indoor lighting that gave it a vintage look and that's why I'm adding yellow here and there. I'm using small bits of a paper towel to bring out a few white highlights. I painted this on an exceptionally humid morning, so the paper stayed damp almost twice as long as I'm used to. I'm going to start painting the white stripes first. You might think that I wouldn't need to do much of anything, but if you really look at the shadows in a white flower, for example, you'll see lots of colors. They can range from light pastels to deeper colors. White is especially good at reflecting colors that are nearby. so. The shadows in the white stripes here will involve some reds, blues, and a little bit of yellow and mixtures of those colors. At this point the painting doesn't look like much of anything. It's kind of abstract and still very pale. It's one of two awkward stages that I'll have to work through. I've been using round brushes here. The small one is a number one and the larger black one is a number five. The lower left corner is extra wrinkly and you can see a variety of colors starting to happen. Here's a dramatic change. I'm adding the red stripes. This is the base color which is a combination of cadmium red light a blazing orange, and opera, a neon pink. Together, they create the brightest red-orange I know how to make. Why didn't I just use a straight red here, like alizarin crimson? That's more of a cool red heading towards purple, and it doesn't pack the same punch. I will layer it on top of this next, though. The base color is still pretty wet, so I'm expecting this deeper red to spread out and fade a little bit. The red stripes are starting to look more three-dimensional and they will look even better when I go over the shadows again with a more intense red. I always say that to make something look three-dimensional you need to have light, medium, and dark values. I try to use more than just those three, sometimes adding several dark layers. I've added some ultramarine blue into the mix and will lay in some purplish shadows. And now I'm really starting to like the red stripes. The red stripes are so bold that I feel like I need to pump a few colors into the white stripes. Here's the next awkward stage. I'll turn my painting upside down to make it easier to work on the stars. I'll coat each star with masking fluid. Masking fluid protects the paper from additional paint layers. It will also ruin any brush you use, so don't dip your best brush in it. This is an old one. The masking fluid is a liquid rubber that begins to dry almost immediately, and as it builds up, the tip of my brush becomes gummy and hard to paint with. 
Even though I'm being careful, I have to work quickly, and it's almost impossible to get razor-sharp points on these stars, but it's close enough. While that dries, I'm going to add more color to the white stripes and some of the red ones. There's a nice area near the top where the white really reflects the red. The shadows and the white are some of the hardest colors to mix. I really have to look carefully because sometimes a shadow will change from red to blue in the space of a centimeter. And now it's finally time to add the blue. My base coat is mostly turquoise with some ultramarine blue. Look at how the masking fluid is resisting the paint. My reference photo showed this entire area as a dark navy, but I wanted it to have a bit more energy. While the blue is still very wet, I'm dropping in shadows using a concentrated thalo blue. Not much water is going on with this paint. You'll notice that the stars are irregularly shaped. Distortions happen when the flag is wrinkled, and honestly, I think a wrinkled flag is more interesting than a flat one. Before I painted this, I asked people who know about flag etiquette, including veterans and teachers, if it was okay to paint an American flag like this. I didn't want to start a YouTube comment war. They were all totally fine with it and couldn't wait to see what I came up with. So if anyone watching this is offended by this wrinkly flag, I apologize, but I really like the way this looks and the challenge it presented. Now I'm going to let the blue paint calm down for a while and go back to the stripes. Most of this is picky little stuff and I'm trying to add more blue where I need it. The blue is pretty much dry and I'm impatient, so I'm going to remove some of the masking fluid with my fingernails and a rubber cement pickup. A few little specks of blue came through here and there, and that was my error, but it's not going to hurt the painting. I'm going to spend some time cleaning up the edges of the stars with a damp brush and just a little paint. The blue on the paper is still sort of alive and I can move it as well. I'm also using a damp paper towel to blur the specks on the stars. This painting is going to be a gift for a couple of new friends. Jeff and I plan to build a house in Northeast Missouri, and our future neighbors, Don and Sue, have been so kind to us. They're an older couple, and their house is decorated with American flag arts and crafts. So I thought I'd surprise them with this little painting the next time we see them. Back to the stars. They're not perfectly white and so I'm adding bluish shadows, especially on the ones that are in the wrinkles. And some of the blue specks are helping to create those shadows. I'll add some warmer gray shadows and even some hints of red. And here's the finished painting. Thanks a lot for watching.